Hi FlossTube, it's Kirsty. This is a channel about cross stitching, quilting, crochet and any other craft I might fancy having a go at. It is Monday the 1st of February 2021 and this is FlossTube number two. I hope you're all well, I hope you've all had a good January um, and if you haven't good, had a good January I hope February improves for you. Um, I'd like to start by thanking everyone who has watched my first Floss Tube, who has subscribed and who has commented. It's great to get to interact with some people and to meet them and um, yeah, to have a bit of a chat, always up for a bit of a chat. Uh, I have had mm, reasonably productive January. Uh, we've been in lockdown here for a month. Weather's been a bit bleh, not much to do in the garden. So I have sat and stitched at every opportunity. Might as well make the most of it. Um, I'll start with my cross stitching and we will start with the Hade, which I have printed out a photo. I'm not sure it's, oops, sorry, that much better than anything else I could show. But this is Mini Garden Gate by Heaven and, or charted by Heaven and Earth, um, artwork by Amy Stewart. So I was saying in my first Floss Tube how I'd really been struggling to get into a um, either a method or a rhythm of stitching this hade. Um, it had taken me about a month. Oh no, it's taken me about three months to do one page. That is mixed in with other projects. But I was just really, it wasn't going smoothly. So I decided that this time I would start at, so I'll try and fold this up a bit. I would start at uh, the top of a column pick a colour, work my work that colour throughout the column, go back up to the top and collect another, start another colour. Um, that also didn't work. <laughs> I got two or three boxes down and found that I'd been missing colours. I was having to re-thread and that was more annoying than just taking, but taking it slower. Um, I then I then managed to, I'm uh, sorry, I then managed to get to one box, saw a sign, saw one of the, uh, one of the signs and thought, I've already stitched with that. Okay, let's get it out again. So I re-threaded my needle, stitched that square, checked really carefully everywhere else that there wasn't any more of that thread needed. Took it off my needle, put it away, looked at the next square and it was exactly the same colour. So at that point, I had a bit of a hissy fit. The air turned blue and I thought things have got to change. I've got to find a different way of doing this. Um, I have heard about Pattern Keeper a lot. I've, you know, everyone's done nothing but praise it. And I have nothing against Pattern Keeper, but that would involve me um, buying yet another device <laughs> that I'm not overly good with. Um, and downloading things. And at the moment, I only have one hade on the go and I only really touch wood ever intend on having one hade on the go at the time. So I thought, well, rather going to desperate measures, measures of having to buy a new device, I'll see if I can find a different method. So I started to work my way back up. And what I now do is I complete an entire square and I park in the square above. So if, it's, if that thread doesn't go into the square above, but goes to above, I cut it, put it back on the ring, and pick it up when I next back into that square. I find if I try to go too many squares too high, I just miss miss the symbols and it's just really, really annoying. And I did also find, as I did this one column, it took me about 10 hours. And it isn't really until you've put the last couple of threads in that it actually all comes together. And I have found I much prefer to stitch an entire square and move on. I just prefer that sort of block being finished and moving on rather than, putting three, four threads into it, looking at it later and thinking, yeah, I can't really see where my progress is on this. Um, but anyway, so this is what we have so far. That's the first page at the top and I am two thirds, three quarters of the way through the second page. Um, as I said, we've been in lockdown, there hasn't been much to do. So I have tried to get a square done a day. Um, it takes me just over an hour, obviously, depending on how confetti heavy that square is. Um, for the moment, I'm going to continue on doing that. I should imagine during the summer, this might well get put to the side. Um, so I might as well make the most of it whilst I can and get as much done. But I am now really enjoying stitching on this and I'm really pleased with the way it's coming. 
on. So that's my haid. The second whip is, here it is, Language of the Flowers by Rosewood Manor. You won't see any progress on this. I haven't touched it since my last video, mainly because I try to spend two weeks on cross stitch, a week on quilting, a week on the crochet. Um, and I don't think I recorded my first frost tube until sort of the 5th or 6th of January. Um, and I'd already done a big block of work on this and I didn't get back to it. Um, but hopefully I will get a lot more done this month because I have actually finished something. So I'm down to three whips, which is what I was aiming for. Um, but I will show it again in case you haven't watched my first video. And is this all good? No, that's fine. So here we go. This is Language of the Flowers by Rosewood Manor. It's a bit of a beast. Um, this edge is the halfway point. And it's the sort of project where you can seem to be working at it forever and making no progress. And then you suddenly finish one of the big vases with flowers in and it's all changed and you've completed quite a lot of it. So as I've said this month, hopefully this will get an awful lot more work done on it. I won't get it finished. I'm not going to set lofty goals like that but hopefully I'll get a significant amount more done on this because I'm really enjoying it and I want to get it up on the wall. So that was Language of the Flowers by Rosewood Manor. So my third whip which is Prairie Schooler Farmer's Alphabet, excuse the rather dog-eared chart, I think I might have sat on it a couple of times. I finished and not only did I finish but I said I was not going to put it into my bag of shame and so I have fully finished it. So I think I can get this in shot. Here we go. This is my fully finished farmer's alphabet. This is going to hang in the kitchen. I have a couple of other things like a chalkboard and pinboard that all hang from these sides because I was one initially I was going to get a frame. Sorry I was going to get a frame um, and then I would have had to buy it online and they either seem to be very, very expensive or very, very cheap. And I would always tend to ear towards the very, very cheap option, but I thought this could just be too cheap. Um, and then I basically, I didn't want to order it, didn't get around to ordering it in time. So I thought, well, I'm gonna have to turn it into a pillow then. So that's what I've done. It's a fairly narrow, flat pillow. This is the back of it, which I thought was rather suitable um, for the chart. And as I said, I've just put this uh, craft twine into it. <laughs> I did have to laugh doing this. I have made bags. I have made aprons. I can do a pillow. <laughs> but when I have to put something in it that is going to be on the outside of it, it does fry my brain a little bit. I have learnt my lesson and I pinned this into place and then I doubly checked. I was like, no, that's not going to be correct. The handles, this is going to be on the inside. So I took it all apart repinned it back into place and then it still wasn't correct and it took me three attempts <laughs> to actually work out which way I had to lay this in relation to the fabric to make sure that it was on the outside but I'm really pleased with this now it's done um I haven't liked the fabric at all it's 28 count Monaco I haven't enjoyed stitching on it because it's been reasonably it's quite stiff and it's quite thick strands I think um so I've had to have it in a heap to stitch on it to make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Um, and I also didn't particularly like the colour of it whilst I was stitching on it. It's a real yellowy cream. And I had thought that I may coffee dye it once I'd finished it a bit, like I think it's Christy of Daisy K Primitives. She did a tutorial or she did a video where she showed how she would dye a finished piece to make it look more prim. And I thought I might do that with this, but when I finished it, it's actually quite dense stitching and there's a lot of dark colours in it. Um, and I was a bit concerned. I was also just a bit scared, basically. <laughs> but I was also quite concerned that you then wouldn't be able to see many of the vegetables. Um, so I didn't. And now, funnily enough, now that it's actually in a pillow, I really, really like it and I like the colour of it. And it's all quite, I'm quite happy with it. So I'm pleased I haven't dyed it, but I will do that at some point with something. Uh, so yeah, so that's a finish. And then my fourth and final whip is November from Waxing Moon Designs, their monthly sampler series. Um, 
I have only got the back stitching left to do on that, to do on this, and it's actually the back stitching in the bottom half of it that needs to be done. It's quite a significant amount of back stitching. I don't mind back stitching, I'm quite happy back stitching. Um, but it'll take a little bit of time, but I'm really pleased with that one. Um, and I thought I, whilst I had this out, I would show you October because I didn't show you that the first. So I started with October. So that is fully finished. I have done November, apart from the back stitching, and I will be moving on to December next. So these are just, I'm just going to continue on with these until I finish the series. Um, really enjoy them, really like them. Easy stitching particularly when it's got lots of words in it like this. So that was my fourth and final whip for cross stitching. I have fully finished uh, a couple of pieces that were in my bag of shame. Um, so this is the first ever cross stitch that I did. It's a Bothy Threads Spring Awakening, it's called. And it's um, one of, I think, it's one of the Rendell designs. It has the splodges on the fabric which you know they look lovely and they're great but when you're doing a design like this with some quite dark browns in it every now and again I had to scrape at it with a needle to check if it was actually splodge on the fabric or if I had stitched in that spot or not um so I'm really pleased with how he's turned out I've just turned him into a very simple fit pillow it's a bit of a bodge job of the stuffing it wasn't there wasn't enough and now there's too much and it's a bit lumpy bumpy but um I like him uh, those of you that might know the design, see, I haven't put the whiskers on. So I had, once I'd finished it, I was supposed to backstitch some whiskers and I didn't. Um, as I said, this was the first ever design or, you know, cross stitch that I did. And I thought that the backstitching had to be absolutely exact and perfect. And I was really struggling to find on the chart where to go down and where to, where to start it from, basically. So I just gave up and didn't. Now, of course, having had a few couple more years under my belt of cross-stitching, I, particularly on a pattern like this, I would just wing it. So long as it basically started in the right place and ended up in the right place, you can't really go wrong. There is backstitching that has to be exact, that's fine. It did not need to be exact on this pillow. I did think about putting it on, before I turned him into a pillow. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to, because it's a bit of a cross-stitching journey. Um, and so I have left it off to show that I didn't backstitch on my first one because I was too scared. So that's Spring Awakening, Bothy Threads. Um, and I've seen lots of Bothy Threads recently, various, uh, I think it's Craft of Eighteen Creations and Lancashire Stitcher, and lots of people are showing them and they are so lovely. I might have to get a few more because they are great designs. And then the next thing, the second and final thing that I FFO'd from my bag of shame, I'm not going to talk about the designer and I'm not going to show you the chart because I didn't realise at the time it was only the second one I bought, but I think it is an illegal chart, um, which obviously, you know, you shouldn't do, but if you don't know, you do do until somebody points it out to you. Um, so this is what I did. And as you can see, there is lots of back stitching on this one. But I have learnt my lesson and I backstitched as I went, um, which I did really enjoy. I absolutely love this one and I framed it myself. I've just pinned it around the top. It was reasonably easy. That being said, there's no straight lines, borders that I have to get exact with the frame. So it's quite a nice starter piece to do that with. And I've done nothing on the back yet. I might either write on it or put some paper over the back of it. I don't know. But there we go. So that was my second ever cross stitch, which is now framed. And I'm really pleased with that. I love that one. Um, I have, sorry, things are piling up. I have some haul. Um, some being the operative word. So uh, all of these have come off um, Stash Unload UK. And I find that 90% of the time, I'm not interested in any of the stuff on there. And then every now and again, you get an absolute gold mine of a seller that it, lots of charts to get rid of and they're just the sort of things you want. And I've learned to be very quick about, me please, me please, me please, me please. Otherwise they just go. 
So the first one, I should have taken these out. I thought I had got myself organized. Sorry about this. The first one is Christmas Land by Raise the Roof Designs. So I thought that was just really pretty, reasonably small piece. It is supposed to have buttons with it. Obviously coming from Stash On Mode, it doesn't. Um, I'm not too concerned about that. There's things like a red heart on the roof. Well, I'm sure I can find a red heart button. I think there's a doormat, possibly a doormat button, or maybe it's supposed to be a present. I can either stitch that in or find something similar or leave it off. So um, yeah, looking forward to doing that one at some point. The next one I got, and I love this series, I have to say I am going to, as I see them, start picking them up. I got Hare's Hunt from Plum Street Sampler. I really like these. There's a lot of them. Hare's Summer, Hare's Spring, Hare's Autumn, Hare's Winter, Hare's Christmas, Hare's Halloween. Um, I just think they're really cool. I love hairs. And so I saw this, grabbed it, and I will be adding to that. The third chart I got off Sash Unload is a drawn threads chart. A few of the beads did come with it. Again, wasn't expecting them to, obviously. Um, but, you know, that's always a bonus. And it is Little Bits of Christmas from the drawn thread. Um, I have one drawn thread chart that I haven't actually stitched yet. Um, but I have been seeing a lot of drawn threads over the Christmas period. Um, I know Nad's X Stitch has been doing one April, May, June and stitched up, I think, one or two over the Christmas period. And they've all looked absolutely stunning. Um, so when I saw it, I thought I'm just going to grab it. So I've got it. Um, and this seems to give you various ways of laying out the cross stitches and you get a couple of bonus blocks in it. Um, and I think my favourite part of it, actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, are the two multicoloured stockings on that bottom row. So that is the drawn thread Little Bits of Christmas. And the final piece I bought is called the Labby Sampler. Um, and I bought it because it was quite unusual. I think it's reasonably unusual. Well, not that unusual, but you don't see many of them there. And it's a photo on the front of the thing, I'm afraid. So there we go. So I really liked it just because of the way the border is slightly on the inside. I love these. I assume these are Trojan horses. Um, and I liked the um, boats on it as well. Um, it's obviously come with all its... Oh, there was a third one. Oh, I'll go and get that in a minute. No, a, another one. I'll go and get that one in a minute. Sorry. It's got. It's obviously got a thing with it. And the address on the bottom is for New South Wales. And if you key it in, it comes up still with this shop in New South Wales. But it seems to be far more of a dress shop. So I did email the lady because these are... It's called for flower thread, which I won't be doing. I'll just be using DMC. And I'm quite happy to use my own colours and make my own colours up. But I thought, well, if there is some significance to various parts of this where certain colours would be much better, I was just wondering if she'd be able to give me a history on it. And basically she said she couldn't because it was nothing to do with her. <laughs> she didn't know what I was talking about. I said, well, your dress is on the bottom of it and it is still the same shop. But anyway, so whether it's different owners. So if anybody does know anything about the Labby sampler, and it's from Anne Labby Designs, an Australian designer, I assume, just because the address on the bottom is Australian. If you could let me know, that would be great, because I'm just quite interested to know. I'm going to grab the next chart. How do I? No, I'm not going to grab. I can't remember how to pause now. Oh, I can. Hello, I'm back again. I hope this works. I hope the sound is still on. Um, so the other chart I bought off of Stash Unload is a Sarah May Designs. And it's called All To Myself. Um, it is a kit. It's a very old kit because the needle in the Ada has um, rusted onto the Ada. It's only on the very corner. And I probably won't end up using the Ada for this, but I will use it for something else. So Sarah May Designs, All To Myself. Now I bought this because you have various morning samplers out there which are great but this to me is my morning sampler 
it just sums it up completely. I'm not a huge one for graveyard, graveside visits, whatnot. I'd rather just think about people and have things that remind me of people that I've lost over the years. Um, so I really, really like the verse. Having got the chart, the top part, which hmm, I don't really see ties in very strongly with the verse, is a bit of a nightmare on the chart. As I said, it's reasonably old and a lot of the lines have just um, faded. <laughs> so I think what I will probably do is just do the verse. Um, I know Robins are supposed to sort of, you know, be significant. If Robins near you, it's somebody that you've lost. Um, I'm going to look up, up other symbols and possibly put them around or quite how I finish it. I don't know whether I make it into a pillow and then applique something onto the back of the pillow for significance for people. I don't know, but I, I just, I love the verse on this. This is my idea of morning samba. So when I saw that, I grabbed it. Last bit of haul to do with cross stitch. Um, I have had this Sleepy Hollow, the Cricut Collection design in my drawers for a couple of years. Really, really love it. Really want to stitch it and I aim to get around to this this year. Not so sure about finishing. <laughs> we will see. Although the instructions make it look really quite easy. But um, I'm sure I'll mess it up somehow. Anyway, I wanted a piece of fabric to go with this. I decided I was going to use Ada because I thought it would be easier as you're having to divide it into the three and things to line the aid up, possibly might be more easy, slightly easier than um, even weave. And I'm not a huge linen fan. Um, and so I contacted Megan Coffee Craft Fabrics on Facebook in my Christmas um, surprise bundle. I'd received a really, really nice dark mottled blue Ada fabric. And so I asked her if she had any more of that, which she didn't. It was a one-off dye. And I sort of explained that I was looking for something specific for a chart and would she be able to dye something for it, which she did. So um, she sent me a photo to say, this is what I've done. Do you like it? And I said, yes. And then I sent her a photo of the chart. She thought it was a bit light. I sent her a photo of the chart um, and said, do you think that'll look good on there? And she said, yes. So I have bought it. So it's very long. Very narrow. Um, piece of paper, basically. I think it's going to look great. I think it's going to look really good. It's just a stor stormy night that you need. Um, so that will be, at some point, that will be a start sooner rather than later, hopefully, for my cross stitching. Um, and I think that is all I've got for my cross stitching this month. Um, my plans will be just to keep on stitching, keep on stitching on my hay, keep on going for the monthly samplers, get as much done as I can on the language of the flowers. Um, I have more FOs that I need to FFO in my bag, so I will pick a couple of those. Um, so hopefully I'll have those to show you next month. Um, and other than that, I think that's that segment over. So I'm going to move into quilting now so if you aren't interested in the quilting thank you very much for watching so far um, I hope you'll come back in March to see my progress um, and I hope you have a fabulous February bye okay so quilting here we go I may have thrown my toys out of the pram <laughs> at the beginning of January with regards to quilting I had signed up for a block of the week quilt um, before Christmas and I didn't have fabric for it because I don't have a huge fabric stash so I thought well I can just buy the fabric at the beginning of January that'll be fine and then of course we were placed into lockdown which I knew I knew was going to happen um, and so I had a bit of a hissy fit about it I have since got over that it has been sorted um, so we'll get on to that in a minute but I did show on my first video my star a day, hexagon star a day from Somerset Designs. This I am hand piecing, but will no doubt end up machine quilting. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a long one. Um, and I have made progress. So I tried to spend a week, well, I did spend a week quilting. And, you know, I had planned on finishing this and taking two um, quilt tops out of my bag 
basting and quilting those. And basically I just um, thought I was gonna get more done <laughs> than I have in reality. Um, so I have, I think if I can remember correctly, I have put a second border of these blues and the white diamonds. And then this side I have moved on to the red stars. Um, so this is going to be the edge of the quilt. There will be white going around the edge of it as I was um, in the same material as the diamonds, sorry. Um, it is a very long quilt, but if I get this, because this is the center, sort of down center piece of it. So we start here, red, diamond, blue, light blue, stars, the dark blue, and then there'll be three more reds. And as I said, that will then be it finished apart from just the white outer edges. Um, so I'm really pleased. I have got more done. The, these, stri these strips aren't yet sewn together. So in the week I have sewn six whole rows and then added them onto the quilt as well as the diamonds separating them in between. So I have actually got quite a lot done really. I just didn't get as much done as I had hoped to get done. But this month I will finish it. So that can go down there. Now the, what should I go on to next? I think I'll go on to the quilt that I signed up for. So it is um, the Catherine Kerr Etoile Rouge. I don't speak French, so if that's wrong, I apologise. And it is a block of the week quilt, 49 blocks, and it features 49 variations on the traditional Ohio star block. Um, I've done part of one of her quilts before. Um, so this is the second time I'm using her website. Um, both quilts have been tonal quilts. So essentially you were told to sort of buy five fabrics, pick a cut, you know, it's supposed to be red, but you can do what you want. Pick a color and you want a dark, medium dark, medium light, very light, and all the rest, and then some sashing. Um, I wanted to make mine slightly more Christmassy. So hers is done in red and white, and I think it's French general fabrics that she used. And it's absolutely stunning, but I wanted mine to be slightly more Christmassy. So because I can go to a shop, I contacted Quilt Essential, Anne at Quilt Essential, who I follow on Instagram. She was super helpful, really quick response, lots of photos. Unfortunately, she just didn't have quite the yardage that I wanted available at the time. I suppose I'm looking for Christmas fabric in the beginning of January. <laughs> Most places are sold out. Um, but I thought I'd mention her, A, because, you know, really good customer service. She was absolutely fantastic. But also she has a huge range of Edita Sitar laundry basket quilt fabrics. Um, and I, I love Edita Sitar and all that she does, her fabrics, her quilts, everything. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, and I know quite often if you go to shows or if you go to shops, you'll find three or four of the bundle and then another three or four. Uh, Quilt Essential Anne has the full bundle in yardage. Um, so if you're looking for that, it's worth giving her a call. She is online only, but as I said, you know, there's lots of photos. She's got complete comprehensive website. Um, and I will be going back to her in the summertime for a quilt that I have planned that I'm hoping to do with Edith Sitar Fabrics. So I then tried my local patchwork, as in 10 minutes down the road shop. They weren't interested in helping me at all, which is a bit disappointing. So I then contacted Jan at Country Threads Patchwork, or Country Threads, which is down in Bath. Um, my eldest is down at college in Bath, and so I have been in once or twice. And it's a fantastic shop. Again, really helpful uh, staff. And so I emailed her and said, look, I've signed up. Do you, would you be able to help me get a bundle of fabric organised? And she was like, yes, send me, the, send me a picture, send me the yardage and we'll sort it out. And a week later, with lots of emails back and forth and various phone calls, um, I had some lovely, lovely fabric delivered to my door. And I have to say, I really like shopping for fabric this way, having a little personal shopper for my quilting fabric. I tend to find I go into a store and there is so much choice and I just want it all. 
um, that I don't really get overwhelmed, but I always sort of come away thinking, have I really made the right choice? Um, whereas I think having somebody where it's not within the moment, so, you know, you're not standing in there with a queue of customers behind you. And so they're not trying to rush you out of the door is the wrong way to put it, but you know, that come on, okay, what do you want? Yes, no, that'll look great. So I think if you're prepared to spend, you know, a couple of days just back and forth on the email, no, I don't like that. Yes, I like that. I was hoping for more Christmassy, less Christmassy. Um, it's a really good way to go. And she obviously has far better taste than me because <laughs> I don't think I've been chasing these fabrics, but I absolutely love them now that they are here. So as I said, there's a big, big bundle and I haven't really prepped it very well. But this was in the first. So, sorry. These and... this are my Ohio these are all the different Ohio star fabrics or the Ohio star blocks are going to be made out of uh, so I really like those and then I mean I think that's the bauble tree fabric as I kept on referring to it referring to her to it and obviously the gold on there and yeah I just really pretty nice and red I'm quite traditional with regards to my Christmas fabrics. And then I thought to make it a bit Christmassy or to make it a bit more Christmassy, the sashing, I asked for golden red. Gold and red, not golden red. No, golden green, sorry. Um, and she's come up with these two. So those will be the sashing between the blocks. So this quilt along actually started a couple of weeks ago. I haven't started it yet, obviously. Um, Mainly because I want to get the other quilt finished first, that uh, Star Day quilt finished. Um, the first few blocks look reasonably easy, so I don't think it'll take very long to catch up. Um, and yeah, I just don't like to have too many things on the go. But I'm really pleased with those. So that is quilting. I will, I've got a couple of quilts that I have made in the past that I would like to show you. If you are a member of the Quilting Police, this is not the segment for you. I make quilts because I enjoy making quilts. <laughs> I don't make them to show. I don't make them to put into competitions. Fair play to everyone who does. I love going to a show and I love seeing all the quilts. And yes, they are perfect. And I aspire to be that perfect. It's never really going to happen. But so my first ever quilt is a uh, I made from a jelly roll. So I went to a quilt show with my friend and I picked myself up a jelly roll and some background fabric and I think this is a pattern called stack coins but it is also a pattern I've seen quite regularly with various names attached to it so let me just stand up and show you this if I can so all the uh, different ones came in part of the jelly roll and then I just used the green to um green as background and you can see, you can see a few of the different patterns on there. This has been well used, well loved. It goes on the sofa, the dog goes on it, gets washed, it gets tumble dried. And I did as I grabbed it the other day out of the tumble dryer. There is a bit of there is a bit I need to patch up. The back, and this is where you need to close your eyes, <laughs> is so it's just plain brown fabric. And at the time, I didn't have a set quilting or sewing area. I still don't have a craft room, but I have a corner that I can leave everything out in. At the time, I used to have to choose the end of this dining room table. So by the time I'd cleared the meal away, children had finished their homework, I then had to get everything out and put everything away. And I spent as much time doing that as I did actually quilting it. So once I'd put it all together and basted it, I just thought, I'm going to get this quilted. And I didn't have the right coloured thread and I thought I don't care I just want to get it quilted I'm so excited to finish my first quilt um so I did it with this very attractive white thread which obviously shows up fantastically on the back and looks really quite crap um and then also my binding I did a, just a running running because I didn't know any better so that's what I did but you know what, binding's still on, it's absolutely fine. And I have yet to have anybody sit on the sofa and go, hmm, used the wrong colour thread for this, didn't you? So 
I think you live and you learn. I've learned from every quilt that I make and uh, there is always a story to every quilt that I make. Sorry about that interruption from uh, youngest child, where's my sports bra? Anyway, have a look for it. It's either washed, dried on the floor of your bedroom or <coughs> wherever you've left it. Right, so the second quilt. Oh, been joined by the dog. Hello. Do you want to come up and say hello? Come on then. So this is uh, Muttley. Here's a uh, Jack Russell crossed with a Whippet. So if we wanted to breed and make a lot of money from him, he would be a Twippet. <laughs> but he's not, it's just a mongrel. Uh, very smelly mongrel. He is now, oh, it's nearly his birthday. So he must be coming up to nine years old, see? Um, he's been out for his walk and he wants his tea. But then he wants his tea at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. He has his tea and then he thinks he'd like some more tea. So there we go. Right, you need to get that sound to show my quilt. But it's, and now you can hear them shouting outside of the door. <laughs> so this is the second quilt I ever made. And this is a pattern that I just made up myself as I went along. I was looking at all different quilts and I really liked the idea of red work quilts. Um, and then I realised how much time it's going to take me to do a big quilt all with red work. So I thought, well, I'll do red and white. And so there isn't, well, there is a right and a wrong way to this one, upside down or not upside. And I also wanted to try lots of different things, basically. So this is absolutely huge. Left to right. Um, the outer squares are just sort of four patches. And then you go in and we have some embroidery. That bit's coming out, to patch that back up. We have appliqued hearts. A bit more embroidery. More appliqued hearts. More embroidery. Um, and yes, and so it basically carries on like that with um, some of the squares have got a split up into threes. And all different things so i was just playing around with it really trying giving everything a try and um enjoying it so i machine pieced this and then i decided to hand quilt it um and i hand quilted it by stitching in the ditch which i think was a mistake because it's actually really hard work when you get to corners to get the needle through it was hard work but it didn't actually take me that long. It's very simple stitch and ditch. It didn't take me that long at all. Um, and it is just calico. Found it with calico. I think there was um, a whole, a large amount of yardage for sale at some point at a show. So I picked it up and I thought, well, I'll use it for that. Now the story with this quilt is once I finished it, I showed it to a group that I was in. Doss is cleaning his feet, sorry. Showed it to a group that I was in. And somebody said, well, you'll never be able to wash that. Why not? So well, because this fabric is something or another and you know, it's all going to run and you shouldn't have put calico on the back of it. And I was quite surprised because she is a really, really nice lady normally, but she just went to town on this quilt telling me why I couldn't wash it and blah, blah, blah. And I was sort of thinking, well, I want to use it, but equally it's, you know, it's fairly white. There's going to go, there's going to be a lot of dirt on it. So I ended up putting it in the airing cupboard for about uh, 18 months and never using it. And then one day I just got really annoyed that it was um, sitting in the air and covered. And I thought, no, sort of, if I put it out and it gets filthy and it all runs, so be it, I've learnt my lesson. Um, so I put it out on the sofa, at which point the dog probably jumped on it and had a good roll around. And I think I made it last for as long as I could. <laughs> and then I put it in the washing machine. And I think I probably put at least five or six colour catches in with it. And they came out absolutely drenched pink, but it hadn't run at all. And there's no issue with the fabric and it now goes on the sofa it gets washed it gets tumble dried it is easier to dry it in the summer it is a big big quilt um but yeah i love it so we use it all the time and so that is what i'm like with my quilts i'm afraid they're made because i enjoy it they're made because i want to use them and if they don't survive the test of time they don't survive the test of time but you learn something every time you make a quilt um last well, two last two things I want to talk about quilting rise quickly. Again, when I first started, a lot of ladies passed me on their magazines, which was very kind of them. 
had a good look through all of them. Um, and I have to say my favourite one and the only one I actually bother to buy anymore is today's quilter. And this is the latest one that came. Um, I think I enjoy it mainly because there is normally always something in it that I think, oh yes, I'm making that at some point. But they also normally always have something extra. Um, it's a bit like a child's magazine. <laughs> you always get a toy. And this month's toy was the bumper book of templates for applique. Um, I'm assuming I can show these quickly because you're not going to be able to do much with them. So you've got all different sorts of things to just use as templates for appliques. Um, I've had an awful lot of, uh, sort of proper plastic templates and various shaped rulers or, um, you know, sort of apple core. They're not rulers. They're still templates, apple core templates or uh, hexagon templates. So you know, normally always get something in front of this magazine and it's really, really good. And I like it. So I thought I would talk to you about that. And finally, I have signed up for the 2021 Quilting Summit, Summit which is being organised by Rebecca Page. And it's actually started today. It's five days. I think you get sort of four or five different classes a day it's all on it's all online um i've i've signed up for it for free so i get an email with links to all the classes and after 24 hours that email disappears you can become a vip member in which case you are, you have access to those classes for the rest of the year um i thought this year i'd just have a look it's for free you might as well um She's actually, I think she's based in London, but she seems to be doing it on New York time because I kept on looking this morning and my email hadn't come through. But I think it has now come through. Um, so that will give me 24 hours to look at it, look at the classes and see if I fancy making anything from them or just getting some ideas. I thought, well, it's free. You might as well have a look. Um, and I think that is it for the quilting segment. So I obviously want to finish my Star A Day quilt. As I said, I have the two quilt tops in my bag of shame that I would like to get quilted and finished. And I need to start my Catherine Kerr Etoile Rouge Block of the Week quilt. Um, so I'm going to go on to crochet, <laughs> crochet catastrophe, um, the crochet segment now. So if you're not interested in that, thank you very much for sticking with me this far. I hope you'll come back in March um, and I hope I have some progress to show you. Um, if you are leaving now, have a fabulous February and hopefully see you in March. Bye. So, crochet. All the stories I can tell you about my crochet. So, I think in my first video, I had shown you my um, granny square blanket, which was the first thing I'd ever made. And I talked about how I was going to do the hook, no, how to crochet a shawl fast and easy, my, the My First Shawl Pattern by Tiffany Hansen on Hooked for Hope. And I would like to say now <laughs> that she is fantastic. Her YouTube video is fantastic. It is fast and easy, if you're not me. I had one of those how hard can it be moments and it turned out to be quite hard. So the two yarns, two um, hanks I had bought to make this with, that is the name of it. Um, and so obviously the first thing I had to do was, I say ball the yarn, but I get the feeling it could be couch the yarn. I don't know. Anyway, I had to take it from the hank and turn it into something usable. So I'd watched a few YouTube videos and, you know, you have the traditional, you put it on somebody else's hands and you wind it off or you put it on the back of the chair or you can buy a machine to do it. And I thought, well, I'm not buying a machine yet. Surely, how hard can it be? <laughs> and I thought, do you really need to use somebody else? If I just untwisted it and laid it on the sofa next to me, then that's the same thing, surely. You just sort of, and it should just unravel. So that is what I did. And I found two... Well, I could see the two ends, so I pulled on one end. <laughs> I've got this. <laughs> you can either laugh or you can cry. And 
I did have a bit of a strop for the first afternoon. I have tried finding the ends and cutting lengths off and then I have to go back in and it's a complete rat's nest. So then I decided to try with the second hank and I got my daughter to sit there with her hands out and doing it like this. And I'd watched the tutorial and you know, it was all about putting it onto your thumb. And you know. So I started doing that. <laughs> There's no going to fit on my thumb. Yeah. So I took my thumb out and I put a pen in instead. And that was, seemed to be going absolutely fine, but it did go slightly wonky. And the pen is still in here. <laughs> I can't get the pen out. So the pen's still in here. It's supposed to be one of these, you know, perfectly rolled, pull from the middle, you'll have no problems. The pen's in the middle of mine, so I can't pull it from the middle. And it was this shape, and then there was another blob off of here. I've now finished this blob off of here, so I am now back down to this shape eventually. I mean, I genuinely don't know where I'm going wrong with this. <laughs> I think I might have to invest in a machine if I um, decide to do much more of it. Anyway, once I got it to this stage, I was like, right, we'll start with the crochet project. And it always takes me a, a while to get it started. Um, I still have to use a safety pin. So you sort of, I don't know, you chained four and then you went back through the first chain. And I always have to put a safety pin in to know where I'm going to go back through, which I do find useful. And so I started and it was very, very, you know, it was really quite easy and simple. And then the first time I'd got somewhere down here and I made some major mistake, I don't know how. So I pulled that all out and then the same, and this was it did take me probably about five five starts to get the very initial crochet bit started to work off of um so i pulled it all out started again and i didn't make a mistake but i kept going and i was thinking this is really drooping down it's supposed to be a triangular shawl and hers is a very big triangular shawl that goes all the way around her shoulders i only want mine to wrap around my neck um and it was, and I was thinking, I'm, this is going to end up more square than it is triangular at this rate. But I'm fed up with this now. It's just going to have to do as it is. And I think I put out an Instagram post if I've already pulled this out three times. I'm not pulling it out again. It's going to have to do. And then, of course, the next morning I woke up and I thought, no, I'm going to have to try it again. And I did watch the, went back to her um, YouTube video. And I realised that I had missed a stitch at the end of it, which would essentially keep it straighter so i've started again and where is my oh i've lost the hook yeah no the hook's come out excuse me let's put that back in i'm not good enough to be able to um fiddle around with things like that so this is as far as i've got now um now this still is drooping slightly, but I do think at this point, we're beginning this point and this point, it's beginning to even out a little bit. And I am doing exactly what she says on the video. So I'm just going to keep going with this. Um, it is very easy. It's a really simple pattern to follow. Um, I think it would be a lot faster if I had thicker thread. Hers was a lot thicker than mine. And she had three yarns of it, three sort of balls of it. But as I said, I only want mine to go around my neck. Um, hopefully, <laughs> this, will, this will make it big enough to go around my neck. Or I'm going to be working off of this. <laughs> going to take me a very long time. Um, I will obviously pull this out and attach it. So I have, a on a couple of occasions, I have had to cut this and reattach it. Um, but you really, you can't actually see the knots within it. It's absolutely fine. So, so that is the start of it hopefully it will only get bigger and better it's really really pretty um yarn but it does split quite easily quite often as i put my hook through i end up with sort of the one or two threads that haven't quite come off or have, you know just a bit split which is a bit annoying and just something that i have to look out for um and i had said there was a sort of like a herringbone down the middle of it when i was trying to describe it last time that's not what i meant at all you can't really see it here but there is essentially a, a pattern of holes going down. Oh, you can see it a bit there. Mm. No. Anyway, 
so that's that i am i am enjoying it i'm annoyed because i had hoped that i would have it done within the week and it took me until thursday to actually get it properly started um but i will just continue on doing a couple of v's every day and we shall see how we go but it is it's hooked for hope is her channel tiffany hansen and it's how to crochet a shawl fast and easy <laughs> unless you're me um the my first shawl pattern um yeah so it's worth looking at and she's got a lot of lovely stuff on her youtube channel and oh i bought the yarn sorry i bought the yarn from a oh, another dog eared sat on it and um a yarn story again in bath i had a bit of a shopping day again in bath um a while ago and so oh one last bit so that's the end of the crochet um so if you're leaving now thank you very much for staying this far i hope you've had a good laugh <laughs> and uh yeah, I hope you come back in March to see my progress on my decidedly dodgy shawl. Um, and I hope you have a fabulous February. Take care, bye-bye. So the last thing I have to talk about is that um, at the beginning of my sort of introduction, I always say, oh, you know, you know cross-stitching, quilting, crochet, and any other craft on that, that's how we go. And I have had I have done the other things, as I said, things like sort of uh, either making aprons or bags or... And I think last autumn, Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts was showing some pumpkins and ghosts that she had made um, and stuffed. And I went and bought those and I've bought the patterns and I have, well, actually my children made a couple of them and then we ran out of stuffing. And I think in the middle of January, I think it was Cynthia Brew from Stitching in the Light posted how she had made, these um hang on let me see if they have actually got an official name because snow couple the snow couple and it's from liberty creek primitives which is on etsy um and she was encouraging people to make some and uh tag her and she'd talk about it in her next foster tube i never got around to making them um but i will do for next year and whilst i was on there uh, they had a half price sale so I thought well getting it for half price you might as well get two and then nothing can travel alone and really two patterns are only one because it's half price um so I also bought Baxter the Easter Bunny I am going to aim to get this done hopefully within the next well four weeks Easter's reasonably early this year so I've got a bit of time but not much time so I'll try and get a Baxter done I also bought Diesel. So she'll be cool for autumn. As I said, I've done a pumpkin and a ghost, and I will do more of those. Um, so she'll be quite good to go up in autumn as a bit of a display. And finally, I've got Joe, the scarecrow pattern. Um, so he'll be good. Well, all year round, I suppose, really. We farm, so we could have him all year round. But yeah, he might stay out all year round. I don't know. I'll see. Depends how well I do it. How good it looks might not come out at all um so as i said this is from liberty creek primitives who are on etsy she had a sale on at the time i mean they're very good value uh you got all the supplies your instructions your templates and having done the pumpkins and the ghosts which were a bit more simple um i have got all the supplies and it does give you a bit more confidence to try something like this so that is one of the other crafts I will be trying at some point, hopefully this month, if I get the opportunity to. And that, I think, is now definitely the end of this video. So if you've made it all the way, all the way to here, thank you very much indeed. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. <laughs> um, I hope it's... I think inspired might be a bit strong. But I hope it's given you the confidence, if you're a beginner like me, to have a go at it. <laughs> Just try to remember to laugh about your mistakes. And um, I hope you'll come back in March to see my progress on everything that I've spoken about in this month. So take care, have a fabulous February, and I look forward to speaking to you in March. Please either subscribe or leave a comment. It's always great to get to chat to people. Take care. Bye.